Coaches and affiliate owners, we are super excited to launch our Fit Affiliate Founders League. It is hosted over on the school platform and you'll find a link in the show notes or a link in our bio over on Instagram. This is a group where there will be high level conversation, high level thinking, critical thinking, creative thinking, a little bit of fun, but the end game is everybody is helping everybody else be better. So I'll see you over there. And welcome back to our next episode of the Fit Affiliate Podcast, joined by one of the most entertaining humans that we can have on the podcast, Mr. Andrew Charlesworth. And I know I'm building you up with a big intro, but that's because Tony's left us unsupervised today. And if you're not here, you know, get the good intro. That's what can I say? I absolutely. He's he's off watching whales or whatever he's doing today. And uh, we're just going to take it and run with it. And I cannot wait. Yeah, it's like, you know, mum and dad. Well, dad's gone out and left us unsupervised, so we'll just uh, yeah, have a little you, house party. You, you definitely don't leave a teenager like myself unsupervised, so let's go. <laughs> that's that's for sure. Well, it's easier for me to wrangle one of you rather than two right. of you, so this will be better today. I'm sure it'll be better. Um, we love you, Tony. No offense. I know you're going to listen to it in, in a few weeks, and but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that then. Yeah. So today I thought... Um, a really relevant topic for us to talk through is why when, and I'll say humans, I won't just say affiliate owners, but this is who, you know, we talk to mainly coaches and affiliate owners have the answers they seek right in front of them. You could gift wrap it, um, gold plate it, hand it to them with a personal invitation, but they don't execute on it. There's nothing. They're given the answers, then they don't execute on it. There's nothing, nothing getting done. Why is that and how can we, how can that change? Yeah, it's, it's like you come with a problem and then you work with a coach and you guys figure out what the root is and you address the problem and the, the, let's just call them humans owner. Hmm. They know what they need to do. Why won't they do it? And I think that falls into the same camp as I, I know it's generic, but looking in the mirror, right? Mm. Is that that concept really, really, really makes you look into the mirror and it makes you go, oh, fuck, you know, like I really am my own problem or I'm being inauthentic to myself of what I'm I'm trying to say or do. And I, I got to have an example, right? A lot mm. of people who own an affiliate, they want to help people. They're humanitarians. Say that till I'm dead in the grave. Like they want to help people, but then they get frustrated because they also enjoy like winning. They enjoy winning workouts and they have a really capitalistic approach to business, but they have a very humanitarian mission. And then sometimes you line those two things up and you get absolutely chaos. And so I posted in our school group, or no, I'm sorry, I posted in my Facebook group. Um, that's probably a post I'm going to do in the school group is to get a conversation going about like goals lining up with actions. Mm. Do your goals that you have set for yourself, do they line up with the actions that you're taking inside of your affiliate? Mm. Because you have to clearly outline those. If you just want to help people only, making money is probably going to take a back seat. And if you just want to make money, more than likely, you're going to do things that don't help all the people, right? Yeah. And so, I don't know. That's just a long-winded answer. What, what do you think, Lisa? No, I, I, I agree. I think that, you know, part of having a coach is to, um, they're going to be able to stand ex externally to you and be able to go, well, you're telling me you want this, but your actions are uh, doing this let why is that a struggle to you and that's not just as a coach of affiliate owners if i'm an affiliate owner or a coach in the gym and i've got a member coming to me going yeah i really want to you know get um abs like rich froning and you know i i want to crush it like tear or whatever cool i'll help you get to those goals hang on a minute your actions are not aligning because i know that you're going through you know you're having pizza every tuesday night and doing all these things and 
partying all the way on the weekends, like your actions are not aligning with what you're telling me your intentions are. And I think we but get that, stuck. But that's where people stop. Yeah. Be, that's where that's, most people stop. Yeah. They stop. Like, and they, like, you're not, as a coach or affiliate owner talking to a member in the gym, then people get scared about having that next harder conversation about why is that a struggle for you? Why, you know, why the partying on the weekends? Why the thing they like, oh, I don't want to scare Andrew away. I don't want to, you know, piss him off so that he's, you know, leaves or thinks I'm prying or anything like that. When you're working with a, a coach in your business, they will be or should be, I know we are, is relentless in why is that a struggle for you? Why do, why does this keep coming up? And it's a, it's a little bit like, and only because I've just, I'm going through the process myself, you know, I've got a, a, a dicky shoulder. So I've been going to see, you know, a physiotherapist and the rehab work is terrible. It's not fun. It's not sexy stuff. It's not, you know, it's attaching a rubber band to a do door and, you know, just strengthening that, that through that range of motion. But I guarantee you 90% of the people go to the physiotherapist and go, what's wrong with my shoulder? Oh, you've got, you know, some impingements. Yep. Cool. Um, here are the exercises too. They're going to make it stronger. Most people are not going to do that. So they've got their answer. They know how to make the pain go away, but it's like, this is not, you know, fun, exciting, sexy work. It's just standing there with a door and a, and a band and, and doing things to make your shoulder. But I've got, they've got the answers to make the problem better, but then they just choose not to do that because that's like not the fun stuff. To and I think, I think with affiliate, um, why I was so attracted to the model is that the, the way that high volume, like if you want, I'm going to use the physiotherapist example. First of all, I'm going to say the word dicky because that was I'm dicky meaning to, <laughs> I would say like, you know, sketchy, but I, I absolutely yeah. love it. So you got the dicky shoulder. And then, so you said most physical therapists, that's what we call them over here, uh, will hand you, hey, this is wrong. Here's your exercises. Here's how to do them even. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And then the reason that they can do that is because of client volume, right? Mm. Huge amounts of client volume. You know, we, we have like chain physical therapist place here. That's mm. exactly what they're going to do. They are probably, they're going to have automated check-in care, X, Y, Z. They don't really care that much because they're just there to hand you an assignment. And I'm not mm. saying that other mentorships or other things are like that. Some, some may be, maybe that's your mission. Hey, just churn, boom, 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 boom. Mm. But I think what affiliate does is like we want to if you if you even enter the process because you have to go through an ecology of figuring out if you're going to even going to be a good fit. If you do that, we are not going to let you go. Mm. We are so once we show you the exercises, we're then going to be like, where are you going to do these? Are you going to do these at your home? And then you're like, well, my home's not exactly the right place, right? Because there's so much going on there. Okay, so where's another place that we can find to do them? What time are you going to do them? Are you going to do them after you eat? Can you create a routine? You see how you go 16 different steps further. And then before you know it, they're healed. And that's why you'll pay $50 for some physical therapists or you'll pay $400 for some. Because the ones that you're are paying 400 they have far less clients but man those clients are like dude this person helped me out so much and so yeah. you know not to bring it back to the school group again but i find that that con at a minimum that conversation like that we just even had mm. doesn't exist anywhere and that's why we're trying to put it on a digital platform having the bare entry to be a low cost of entry super low so that pretty much anyone can do it costs Netflix and some change, right? But you yeah. can get this type of conversation going um, and you know it's vetted, you know it's clean and you know people are there not trying to just say, here's your exercises. Mm. They're trying to be like, all right, you know. Yeah. And there's, even within the, the confines of that group, you know, where it's not, you know, we're talking, we spoke last week on the on the podcast that it's, it's um, a, almost a group mentoring model and it's helping, you know, you're surrounded by people that just want to do better. It's not the standard, um, should I stop Kill Cliff or Fit Aid in the gym or, you know, how do I, how do I write and how do I write an 
a, an email to sponsors for a competition, like the same old stuff going in circles. It's higher level questions and requiring high level thinking in the answers. But then also within that, because, you know, it's group, not individual, but there's going to be someone in there saying, how'd you go with that, that thing you said you were going to do? Mm -hmm. How did that play out for you? Because, you know, you'll be seen and heard. And, you know, that's one of the things that humans most want. It's also one of the things humans are most scared of to a degree as well. And that's why we, you know, we go back to circle back to, you know, the member in the gym and we're saying that these conversations aren't happening with coaches and affiliate owners aren't having them with their members because no one's having those conversations with them. Right. And learning how to have those conversations in like, for a lot of people, it'll feel icky. But when you've had those conversations and been on the receiving end of it done well, then it's much easier for you to then go forth and that's they're all the conversations that you want to have with people. You know, right. since I started my coaching relationship with Fitfiliate, I'm not interested in having small conversations with people any more about, you know, nothing. Because once you've had important conversations and meaningful conversations that you've seen move you forward, they're the conversations you want to have all the time. Right. Because you see the potential of it. And understanding that, you know, because, you know, in school we're it's vetted, it's controlled, it's not just a, a free-for-all on other platforms, and you're not necessarily having a conversation that someone is having with you with the intent to sell you something as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and and rightfully so, human beings have their guard up about that. Mm -hmm. um, even when I speak, sometimes I'm like, man, I just try to sell somebody something, and it and it feels in a weird way. Funny enough, we had a, a conversation about sales yesterday with a bunch of owners, and <clears throat> you know, everyone has different. They don't want to feel salesy. That's part of like the CrossFit brand, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to feel salesy. You don't want to. Uh, and so that was a lot of their problems. Like, I'm not good at sales. I'm not good at conversions. Mm. And so we had, a, we had a good discussion about like, I actually think you are good at conversions because you're passionate about the thing. So now mm. how do we figure out how to capitalize on that passion? And we walked down the rabbit holes and sure as shit, we came up with like, if, if people just talk about the 10 general physical skills of fitness that they learned in their level one. Cardio, respiratory, endurance, strength, stamina, flexibility, power, speed, coordination, accuracy, agility, balance. If, if those are just on a board, then typically you're going to make a sale because of your knowledge that you just have of it. Yeah. You know? And if you're coming at it from this place of genuine curiosity for the person who's sitting in front of you and wanting to understand, like, why they're struggling why this why they need this then that's not a sales conversation and tony and i have talked um on previous podcasts and and various other things that we've created that you know sales should be an act of inspiration not manipulation and people start to get the ick when they feel the manipulation and when you've got someone sitting that's you know just wants to give you all the answers and say, well, this is how you do it. This is how you convert every person that sits in front of you and um, just follow this template or this um, outline. That's when it can start to feel that ick as well as people are like, um, because that's not giving them inspiration to, to act or, you know, understanding that, that genuine curiosity behind the questions. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I, I just know the best way. So I'm just, just do this. This works for me. It's worked for hundreds. Yeah. And it's also, <clears throat> it's also the fastest way to put somebody into the imposter syndrome, right? Where yeah. you're, you're doing something that truly your spirit or your mind, you know, whatever, yeah. it doesn't feel that's right. Even if it's working, <clears throat> yeah. right? There's a lot of times that people, I heard a good quote once, I'm going to probably F it up or I'll at least get the gist of it, but it's like, Everyone's like, oh, you know, find something you're passionate about, make money at it, and you'll never work a day in your life. Mm. That's not, that's not always, that doesn't always work, right? Mm. You need to actually find something you're skilled in mm. because we all have very unique talents. But then if you want to be truly happy, you have to find something you're skilled in that aligns with something that you're passionate in. But it's, it's clear to have the differentiators. 
in those. So when you're handed a templated answer, it typically says, I don't care what your passion or skills and you're going to do this. And then that's where you all of a sudden become stiff, robotic, confused, sad, happy. I don't know, like everything's going on. Yeah. And you, you, you do get to the point where you're, you lose yourself in that process. And it's like, I'm trying to be, you know, whatever X, Y, Z template is. So we talk a lot about um, on here about, you know, affiliates having, you know, the beauty of the affiliate a model model is that we can be completely individual and you can do it the way that you want. And we talk about your why and that if you don't have a why, then you will automatically assume someone else's why and that identity. So, you know, God love them, all those gyms out there that are proven or mayhem or HWPO or the the million other, you know, um, programming services out there, um, that becomes their identity. And so the same is when you take someone's template, there's like, this is how I built this gym. So, you know, I'm CrossFit, you know, podcast, whatever I want to call it. And I, I get your templates. I go, oh, well, okay, now I'm, I'm feel like I'm CrossFit Charlesworth, but that doesn't really fit align with me, but it's successful. So I need to keep doing it. And you lose yourself in that process because that's when you start to lose track of who you are, who do you want to be, why you're even in this, because all of a sudden I'm just doing the things. So we get back to the what's and we start to lose focus on that, that why and those, you know, um, ecological pursuits rather than the mimetic pursuits. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Yeah, it's, you know, um, but that's tricky. It's a tricky process, right? It's it's not easy to to go down those rabbit holes. It's in your in your heart and your mind, and and that it seriously, you know, like people find out things that they may have never found out otherwise, and. Mm. I don't know. I, I mean, I typically the person who opens a CrossFit gym, this is why, this is why I think a lot of people do do templated things because they think we know the avatar person that opened a gym, right? Somebody who really likes exercise, they found CrossFit and, and the, the level one blew their mind. Like this whole fitness concept, like they thought they knew one thing, they had no freaking idea and they learned and then they went to the level one, their mind was blown. And then you mix that with someone who has enough passion to take a risk to start a business. Mm. And that's kind of where it ends. Yeah. Right. They had enough risk tolerance to take a business because they were passionate on something. And what's missing from, I mean, there's a lot missing from that equation, right? About what would run a, a I don't want to say the word successful about, because that's unique to the individual. Right. But mm there are things missing from that. And uh, number one thing is, I think that's what people attack on the template is simple business sense. You know, mm. like, are you an LLC? Or, you know, like just, I mean, if we say something as basic as that, people be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know mm. about all this stuff. And that's the way CrossFit really kind of wanted it to be in the beginning. Hey, pay your affiliate fee, pay your insurance. You don't see it, you know? Mm. Go but forth and that, do the thing. Yeah, yeah. And then it's changed from the feedback affiliate owners want. But mm. then, you know, it comes to the other side of like, don't help me. Yeah. You're corporate. You know, like it's it's just, I don't know, well, that's funny. But that's, that's the thing, you know, affiliate owners will stand on, on the soapboxes and they'll scream, you need to do more for my affiliate fee. What are you doing for me? What do you, And we've heard that con and probably – louder over the last four years than we've heard from any other time in our history, I think. Um, and whether that was people, you know, change during pandemic times or whatever, but it just seems to be very consistent. Like I've been involved in the, like you've been involved for a lot longer than me, but I've, you know, I have been in the CrossFit ecosystem since 2011, had an affiliate for seven and a half years. And you know, it, the the shouts never seemed as loud as what they have in the last four years about you need to do more. So HQ, to their credit, have created a, you know, an enormous amount of tools and resources that affiliates can can tap into. 
Whether you agree with it or not, that's irrelevant. There's a, there's a whole heap of things that have been created. Yet, you know, people are still, yeah, but that's not the answer I wanted. So you need to do more. But it's like, well, we've given you, you've been provided, like gifted. Well, not gifted, I guess. You, you're paying for it. But it's right there at your fingertips. And I guarantee you, like, even if we talk about the affiliate playbook, um, when it came out, people were like, oh, my God, yeah, you know, this is going to be step by step. I guarantee you that there would be less than 1% of all affiliate owners that have read that cover to cover. Because I guarantee you people tapped onto it and went, oh, shit, that's like 85. I don't have time to read 85 pages. I don't yeah. have time to, you know, and that's not the solution I want. Then I want the solution to my specific problem, not you need to do more for me not just a broad general stroke like that. But again, that that you could paint by numbers an affiliate essentially by following what's in that playbook. But I guarantee you there's been such a um, minute percentage of people that have actually read it from cover to cover and go. <clears throat> and then thinking critically about it, which is the next step is, how does this apply yes. to me rather than big, big school page plug. 86? You, yeah. Lisa, you just did a big school plug because I had a vision for the school concept when we were kind of brainstorming and, and these things were going on is I, I want you know, hit rewind for 30 seconds and listen to the piece of picture this person of kind of what Lisa was just saying. They have the handbook in front of them. They kind of skim through it. Now, Picture the person who has nothing. The handbook, they, they are, they spent every single dollar to open their gym. They are living in their mother's basement. They, I mean, they have, they have everything riding on the line. They're not going to be able to afford mentorship off risk, off rip. Mm. But if, but that's going to be the person that scours that 85 page handbook highlighting mm -hmm. Hey, making notes inside of the book, hustling up at 2 a.m., just like you are right now, you know, like going crazy. And I want a person to be able to have access to that through the school group. And then maybe they never, ever, ever purchase any. Maybe they don't. They don't. They don't go to, you know, affiliate to look for a coach. They don't go anywhere else except all the information is in somewhere. But you, you're going to be the one that has to do the talking the diving into other people's conversations, the mm -hmm. reading things that they said, the pros and cons. Remember, mm -hmm. not giving advice is is part of what we do, but pros and cons is not giving advice. It's yeah. pros and it's cons. Yeah. It's There's pros and cons to every choice. You know, yeah. so like when when people share those things, if I'm a new hustler opening a gym or I'm struggling or I'm whatever, I'm looking, I'm cross comparing, I'm going blah blah blah, you know, yeah. and then I'm making note of in my life how that applies. Yep. Yeah. And it's that critical thinking element that where if you're just given a template said, here, go do this, you just wander off and you just become cardboard cut out and you're all beige and just doing the thing. I remember in the, the 2014 when I opened my affiliate, like there was, you know, I think two brain was the thing then. That was the only thing. And I was like, well, that's – and I, I was a bit like the person you described. I didn't have 10 cents to – to, to rub together and I remember listening to a, a podcast that was popular at the time and they'd talk about strategies and stuff that they'd done that had worked well in their gyms and I would listen to that and I'd go okay and rather than just going oh I'm going to run off and buy a heap of gift cards for my members I was like okay how does this apply to me and my demographic and my situation and how can I take the concept and actually execute on that rather than mm -hmm. I'm just going to do what they said word for word. And that's, yeah. a, that's you know, and some of the stuff, you know, they would talk about, I go, well, that, that, that won't apply. That doesn't apply after I'd been through that pros and cons and can I make this work? But I would never have implemented anything that they said um, just, you know, as they said it, A through Z, because that's, that doesn't fit my particular situation and my particular thing. And, but I had to have those critical thinking skills to go, what in this is useful to me? What can I extract from this? There's something from this I can take and maybe do in a completely different way, but it's, it's a, it's a kernel rather than here's the solution. This will solve all your problems. And critical thinking is a skill. 
it's yeah. it's it's an, an insane skill it's something that you're I, you're, I don't know. Are you born with it? Like, I don't think you're, you're born with survival skills, right? Oh. You're born with primal skills. Critical thinking skills applies to the environment that you're around. And, and it, it truly does. Like being around much more critical thinkers is a good space to be. I can yeah. tell you what's not critical thinking is just being on social media and comparing. Mm. You know, comparing is the thief of joy. We've all heard that. I think that's a Roosevelt quote. I don't know. Someone listen yeah. to this actually comment and, quote, and correct me on that. But one thing um, I know I saw Tim Tebow talking about this the other day. And he said, you 12% of our thoughts are based on some sort of comparison. Mm. And that's at a minimum. So when you surround yourself with critical thinkers, now you become less of a comparison because it's provoking thoughts. If somebody can provoke a thought, I don't care what they look like. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care what yada, yada. Um, and that's how you exit the matrix. And that is, it's, it's questions, isn't it? That create mm -hmm. the space for you to then start, you know, learning. Like, so, you know, Tony, Tony has often talked on the podcast about, you know, when we go to school, we're just, this is what you're going to learn. This, you don't, critically think about the information that you're getting because you're just right. like I, i'm learning this to memorize it to be able to recite it for for a test or something whereas when we talk about critical thinking it's it's when someone can ask you the question is, is about why is that a struggle for you why is that hard why do you believe that and it actually makes you rather than just going oh just because that's what i've always been told to think about well why does it mean something to me and and lets you get into that skill and when you're surrounded you know we talk again one of our other taglines is you know people like us do things like this when you're surrounded by a group of people that just want to be better are critically thinking and are going to ask questions rather than just just do this and don't ask stupid questions everybody is going to have the level raised 100 mm percent -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, and if you don't, you don't feel like you're a critical thinker, you will develop that skill quicker than you think if you immerse yourself in that process. Yeah, I'll be honest. I know having a four-year-old, um, we're in the why stage right now where <laughs> literally, literally he will break you down with whys. And, so, yep. and I, I think as a parent, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a parenting show, but I guess we can all learn something from critical thinking would be like, I actually will take the wise to the end of my bandwidth with him. But if, if all of a sudden say, Hey, we're going here and they say, why? And you say, because I said, so don't get me wrong. Because I said, so definitely happens frequently. But if it's the first thing all the time, you're teaching them not to critically think well. And eventually <laughs> why are we doing? Why, why, why? And then finally it'll be like, because if we don't do this, then we get hit by a car. You know, like at, at the end of the finally, and then finally you end, you end the end of a why and you're like, hell yeah, mm. they took me there. Um, yeah. And so that's what we were trying to do. And it's, you know, also it teaches, teaches, you know, kids as well. Don't ask questions yes. because, because there are no answers <clears throat> and, you know, the power of questions is, and that's something I think that we do, you know, uniquely well at fit affiliate is the power of asking the right question at the right time and then shutting up and waiting for an answer and holding space for the answer and being okay with a with a silence or a break in the flow of conversation we you know we can we've we we love doing that and all too often in life like people don't get that opportunity normally if I'm asking you a question, I'm already now thinking of my response in reply right. to what I, what I think you're going to say. So I'm already, you know, I've left that part of the conversation. It's human nature. Um, whereas we will sit in that space and go, so why is that a problem for you, Andrew? Mm -hmm. And we'll just wait for you to come up with, you know, to start critically thinking and, and you might say, well, you know, I'm really busy yet. Yeah, cool. Why is that a struggle for you? Like, and just keep asking the right question. And there's so much power on that when you can see somebody trip over their own truth and go, oh, so I'm the asshole in the room. 
cool. Mm-hmm. And then we get back to that, what you said, you know, looking in the mirror, that exercise is really hard and it can even be harder when someone else is, is holding the mirror but also they won't let you look away. Because if right. you're going to the bathroom by yourself, go, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to look in the mirror and you're like looking everywhere else but squaring your eyes in the mirror. If you've got someone sitting in front of you asking why is this a struggle for you and they're holding that mirror up, there's not many places to look. Mm-hmm. You know, the – and one thing about Fulfillia, which I really, 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 really liked, I, I could tell it right away with Tony, with the culture community, you know, critical thinking is what developed CrossFit. It really did, right? Mm. Like it challenged everything. Why? You find out things. Look at Joe Rogan, right? He's the most famous. I mean, I would argue Joe Rogan is, Rogan is like, he's probably up there when it comes to like any sort of fame and not in like, like, I don't think he really cares about that. I just think he has such conversations because he's so curious and a critical thinker. Mm. And he's not afraid to share his opinion, but he has opinions, mm. but his opinions can be changed. What mm. I like about Fitfilia is, I'll be honest with you, I, I feel like the group in the community has low amounts of opinions. Mm. Like if 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 I come in and just have a rant and I'm like so, I don't freaking know. I come in and I just start going on. I'm so sure about this one thing. Mm. You guys are probably be like, okay. That's your day today. Mm. And then I would do that for someone else because I just needed it on that day. Where, where, where I'm going with this is like, we used to be such a culture in CrossFit where, you know, we did critically think, ask questions about everything, called out the bullshit. But then it's mm. like, if it didn't fit the exact narrative, we didn't love it. Right. Mm. If it didn't exactly, you know, play to, you know, corrupt big soda or anything like mm. that. Like we're like, ah, you know, and that's where I kind of critically left a little bit of never CrossFit, but just, I was like, man, you know, I think there's something else else here. I don't, I don't think every single human is out to like kill us. I, I, I just don't, mm. um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask a little more. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper. Right? Yeah. And it's, and it's that curiosity as a human and even within like, my own business when I own the affiliate is was having that, you know, and, and maybe on reflection, like I look back and think, well, I actually didn't give myself enough credit for the way that I used to think it because it was always around, well, how can I look into that further or, or not just taking it on the surface level? And, you know, that example that you just gave where someone, you know, might come in and they, they just, you know, they'll have a vent if someone doesn't have someone in their corner to have that too, and they go into the, one of the many affiliate owner Facebook groups and they go on there and they'll have a, (laughs) they'll have a moment and guaranteed there will be people in the comments who will go, I don't know why this is a problem. This is, this is very basic or this is, and just shut them down. Yeah. And because you know, the right way, you know, here's what to do. I don't know why, you know, you are complaining about this. Here's what to do. And they they have that belief that their way is the only way and is the right way. And this person's just expressing some frustration, some fears, some doubts. Like there's a lot of stuff underneath that, beyond that rant. It's like, you know, when you can hold space for somebody and, and you're critically thinking about what it is that they're saying. So you're taking their information on, you're analysing, you're critically thinking so you can have that next question, which is going to move them out of that space of frustration and into more of a solution mode. And they're going to find their own solution because, you know, we believe that everybody is the solution to their own problems. They have all this, they have the skills and knowledge that need to move themselves forward. We just peel back the layers of things that are, that are holding them back and getting in their own way. But be careful because when you start to critically think, ask questions, it, it, it will lead you to places that, you you might not be able to look at the world again the same way a relationship with someone the same way it you know it's 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 a it's a space where it's much more comfortable to just sit on your couch and keep watching netflix you yeah know? 100 it, it really is i remember it's when i first 
you know, did I was the person that went to the level one, blew my mind, like, you know, I couldn't sit in the local shopping centre anymore without seeing hips, knees and shoulders moving with dysfunction. Like, yeah. you know, I, I joked once to one of my members, I said, all I see is in the world around me now are hips, knees and shoulders, you know, that are not, and I see someone moving and I go, I know what's, what's holding them back and da, 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 da. I said, I can't unsee that anymore. So mm -hmm. that's a bit, you know, the same thing with that critical thinking. You, you, once you've seen it and experienced it, you can't unsee it and you don't want to unsee it. Right. Because you're like, this is where better happens. So mm -hmm. when we're talking about having that that group of individuals that go, yes, I could crowdfund some solutions here, but I'm probably, you know, going to get a lot of um, shit that I don't want to see. Or I can have critical conversations and think higher with a group of people who are going to challenge me not just to sit on the surface level. And once you've dipped a toe into that, you're like, I'm over here. Yes. Like, that's, yes. That's, that's the experience that I want to have more often. And I know then the more times that you dip into that and you see people start to talk on a topic and you can see that it's healthy and it's helping everybody, you become more comfortable with asking more yourself yep. and you know the goal of the school group is for people to give more than they get from it so it's the quality of your contributions but yes. when everybody's in there and we're all rowing in the same direction um it's a powerful force for good for like you said netflix and change yeah well also how that's rewarded is how the school group operates once you reach a certain level then you're eligible to kind of come to these events mm -hmm. that the money is going towards the money yeah. you know uh, parts of the profits are of the group are directly going to create events for people who are in the level i can't remember eight or nine stage and yeah. that's fucking awesome um because it's the true and now but it's not easy you're not just gonna like enter the group and get there that is yeah. not how these things work you can't pull an all-nighter like you can on your PlayStation and, you know, get through all the levels and go, oh, here I am. It is it is very much akin to the work that's required when you yeah, went through I, it. I hate, to, I hate to say it. I, you know, school has a lot of similarities to Discord, which was, you know, we were tossing around the idea going back and forth. And I was very big into Discord, still am, for, for a long time in 2021 to 2023 for uh you know i was in a certain sector of of the crypto it's called decentralized finance and y how you would get eligible in these groups is you would have to talk to reach certain levels that they kind of that that's how they knew your trust yeah. so yeah. then when a, when a new project would come out they would have what's called whitelist people so once you had a whitelist spot you had early access to buy whether it be a token a project or something like that prior to it you know going out mm. and it, if this sounds like ponzi or insider trading it, it is because in theory that's what everything is like that's like breaking the matrix right mm. um if you think if you don't think that's the way governments are ran then you're absolutely just still probably netflix and couching and that's not even like a that's not even like a conspiracy theorist that's just factual right mm. so i love that for the school group because it's like and you're getting rewarded or at least an option uh, uh, because well, what's cooler than when you know people for digitally, then all of a sudden get to meet them about like, wow, we've had these conversations. Like, it's so cool. Which, you know, is back to the origins of CrossFit. You know, Tony will talk about mm -hmm. how people would drive four hours just to meet up with other people in a park and do a kettlebell workout because that there was no affiliate near them. And <clears throat> this is someone that they'd spoken to on the forums and, on the message boards and, you know, what Greg Glassman originally said still holds true. Men will die for points. Yeah. Which is how CrossFit, you know, was founded. Do it faster, heavier, longer. And the same thing with the school group is like, you're going to progress through your levels, um, but you need to fully engage and participate for that. We're not just, HQ are not just handing you a, a pass for your level four just because you've been a coach for 10 years, you know, right. you need to be immersed and you need to be part of that. And that's the same as the, the school culture. Yep. Completely. Completely. So I think that that's, 
you know, an important differentiator is that, you know, if we talk about a Facebook group, everybody can play. Like as someone, right. as long as you ask to join and someone looks at your profile and you look legit, then you're going to go in. Um, and there's very little checking of someone's knowledge, skills or experience or they're validating that being in there. But when yeah, you're in a good embedded, in theory. Great in look, great, you know, open source, whatever. However, then you will you are still going to be subjected to the attitudes and whims of the of the herd to a degree. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the amount of times I've seen in some of the affiliate owner groups, like, you know, the the herd will just turn on one person for mm -hmm. because every you know a few people have taken issue to something that was posted or a comment and then next thing it's group think takes over and everybody does the you know is yeah that's my opinion too well is it your opinion and why is it your opinion and right. how did you form that opinion are you just doing that because everybody else is doing that so that's the that's very different when you get into a a, a mentoring group for want of a better word where I'm part of this group for what I can contribute to the group to make it better, not just go along with what Andrew or Lisa say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well said, Lisa. I mean, it, it's, I got nothing to add. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's why I like having you and, and, and Tony's away for the day. He never <laughs> agrees with me. Well, um, it's hard to not agree with that. I mean, you said it so elegantly and, that I do believe that open source communication is good in theory. And, and guess what? Guess when it was really good when it first started coming out. But now every single person has such access to open source that it becomes a dumpster fire. Just a dumpster fire. And like, you know, same thing with Twitter X. You know, um, everyone loves X because you can get legitimate news on there. There's, there's zero censoring open source, et cetera. What happens with that? Robots take over. So now, you know, when you read something, you get thousands of like robots commenting or through the da, 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 and then you get friend request. It's like, so it becomes messy too. Now, if you can sift through the mess, you can still get valid information. But um, so is this open sourced? Kind of. You have to be vetted first though, because that's who affiliate owners want to talk to. Yeah. And, and not just... I guess it's a constant vetting process as well. Like, you know, we talked um, last week about if someone's in the group and for whatever reason they just, you know, trolling the group or whatever, then, and not adding any value, then it's by Felicia, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the, the, like, I'm sure every person who, and I know I've done it, created a Facebook group that you're like, yeah, I'm not going to let any, you know, um, ass hats in here. I'm not going to, you know, this is not going to happen. And eventually it grows bigger than anyone can control and it goes bigger than your intention. And that stuff eventually filters through and just gets too big. It's like a wildfire. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of having something off those platforms is that the you're not being fed constant stream of ads and other stuff that's not relatable. It doesn't get lost in a feed. Like here's a very... And this is why we like school. It's a it's a very structured platform that you can, you know, things don't get lost in the mix. Like if you don't go into some of those Facebook groups for, you know, a week, you've missed half the things. You could spend three weeks scrolling just to figure out what was the, the post that you right. saw that you wanted to, to look at. School's not going to run away like a wildfire. We could have a 1,000 people in there, and that's still not going to be this insane wildfire event. Right. And you, that gives you the assurance that, you know, this is a place where I can, I don't need to hide under, um, I don't need to post anonymously because of, I don't want people to send me hate messages or yes. fill my DMs. It's like, I can be me in that group because um, this is a place of authentic humans being authentic who want to do better and it's a protected space. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's the benefit of, of taking things off some of the bigger platforms as well. Yeah. You have so many habits on like, let me give you, let's say you're about to comment something really nice on Facebook. And then, in, you know, as you're commenting it, 
an ad pops up that reminds you of an emotion that they've preyed on with their technology and it makes you feel a certain way about yourself because you've clicked on before. I don't know. You just need like hair, you're bald and you need hair treatment or something. And, and that it makes you self-conscious. And then all of a sudden you're about to type something and you can see the freaking hair ad. And it's like, then that changes your demeanor mm. makes you feel a certain way emotionally. And then all of a sudden your response changes. And yep. guys, this happens to me all the time. Like I'm, you mm. know, working and I get a text from my wife and the kids are home and like, uh, what am I supposed to say? Don't text me at all during the day. Yeah. In theory, but that's, that's not a life I would want to live. So like mm. learning how to deal with those emotions, that's the next question. Why that, that would be somebody tell me an answer. Oh, well turn your phone, put your mm. phone, you know, some hardcore dude. You're like, oh, just, when I go to work, put my phone in my pocket and I don't listen. Well, that doesn't help me because then mm. you're just giving me what you do and I don't want that. I want to be able to. So I need to work on managing. Without, Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, and, you know, that's a perfect example that, you know, someone like that, yeah, I just put mine on flight mode all day. Well, cool, but that doesn't work for me because, you know, maybe without the context of that person's situation who, well, lives at home with, you know, three cats, then right. yeah, no one's getting, your phone's not going to ring through the day, but you feel good about doing that. That's cool for you. That That makes you feel good. That's great. But when you tell me that in a condescending tone that it should be something, you know, that's what's well, basic level, why aren't you doing it? Then again, your whole how you feel emotionally about yourself and what you do and that comparison comes back into it is like, oh, well, you know, I'm not as good as Andrew because I don't put my phone in flight mode and I don't do this and my, you know, wife is messaging me and I reply, does that make me a bad human? Right. That just doesn't fit with your situation. And again, if you don't critically think about it and go, well, what's the other situation like versus how does this work for me? Well, and how does this align with my values, who I am, which circ every conversation I feel like we have in Fitfiliate circles back to that why. Who am I? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And if that doesn't align with my values, then no, I'm not going to leave my wife on an island for eight hours so I can just you know, sit in the library and work in peace and quiet and then get home and there's chaos. <laughs> right. That's not, that doesn't align. So I can't just take that piece of advice and go, oh, my life's instantly better. Yeah. Because we, you've got to wake up with yourself at the end of the day. Mm hmm Thanks. So, you know, do with that what you will, but it's, you know, I think this conversation really has, you know, two elements in the fact that, why don't people execute when they get what they've asked for? So all of the answers. So why am, why am I not doing anything with that, which is, you know, into that behavioural. But then there's also, did you critically think about those answers? And maybe, and then that's only when you can say, well, I didn't execute because X, rather than I just didn't do it because it didn't fit what I think I wanted. Yes. So kind of two aspects to it. And, you know, I guess the the part we all focusing on at the start is like everyone is screaming and, and jumping up and down and I want more and you need to do more for me and I need help, but I, you're not helping me, but you're taking my money and what am I getting? Da, 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 da. They're the people we're kind of, you know, looking at and going, well, okay, why is it hard for you to do something with that information that you have in front of you? It's all there. like we can infinitely Google anything we want now for any particular answer to anything. But then what do we, if we're not executing, that's where the bigger question is. Mm -hmm. Right. Beautiful. So I think, you know, for us at Fitfillet, we're about asking more questions and giving you the answers because we believe inherently that you have your own answers. And I think that's, you know, the beauty of coaching is the transfer of belief, whether you're coaching a member on an overhead squat, like, hey, I know this is difficult. I know this feels awkward. I know this is sticky, but I know you can do an extra, you know, five kilos, five pounds, whatever it is. Like, I I believe in you, so let's try it. And that's transferring belief to the person. Yes. And the same as coaching in, in the business sense, it's, you know, I believe that you can, you have the capacity to overcome anything that's in your way. 
and I'm going to keep believing in you until you believe in you. And that's yeah. the beauty of, of coach. And that mentoring um, model in that, you know, mentors will, should give away everything that they have. Like a true mentor will, who's got to where you want to be, will give you all the, all the answers. But, you know, it's then being able to critically think and how does this apply to me and how can I make it work for me? Yep. Love cool. it. Well, this has been a fun chat without the boss today. It's yeah. been good. Um, I was going to say, I think, I think it's a good pin. You know, yeah. it's a good pin in it. Like we, we hit, we hit what we wanted. Um, I, I think it's short enough. People can listen to the end, hopefully. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Like we, you know, not a, not a three hour diatribe yeah. about why we have all the answers. We don't have the answers. You do. Right. But we're going to help you navigate your way to it. So, um, Reach out if you're interested in joining the school group. It's a powerful group of uh, individuals who are working as a collective to be better and, and you know, leveraging groupthink in a positive way to become critical thinking. And mm -hmm. everyone just wants everyone else to be better. And that's what I, I love, the conversations that are happening. And, you know, the, the seeing people grow and get comfortable in that has been, you know, absolutely amazing. So reach out. Um, follow us at Insta uh, on Instagram at FitFiliate. Please give us a like or subscribe on your favourite platform that you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube. Um, and please send us a message, drop a comment about the episodes if there's something you want to hear us uh, ponder on. So thank you for your time, Mr. Charlesworth, and looking thank you. forward to the next one. See you next week.